What's up, dude? Roma side. Yeah, man. What do you say, boy? Man, you chill, boy. You chill, go and manage, man. Yeah, this is a, you, this you a new yours, huh? no, I forgot mine. I, I think it's in the car. Yeah, because you know, I, I, I'm doing this because you never know. Maybe at some point, Kai, when you get excited. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. When, mm-hmm. when was the last time you shook somebody's hand? I can't remember, man. Me too. Yeah, it's becoming you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to get used to the whole, to the whole thing. So, TK, it's it's, it's great to have you on the diary conversation. Yeah. You know, me and I'm you. I'm a little bit on a diary song. What are you gonna say on a diary song? Oh my god! So much <laughs> to say, yeah. I, I have. I am on diary three. I I, did I, I, I prefer not to name call, but um, I can do that. If I no, I know you can. <laughs> I've got a lot of stories. No, I know, I know you can. But no, yeah, I think I mean, one diary session. We, yeah. You're on eight now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe ten. Mm. When we get to ten, God willing. Yeah. It's, it's a producer's yeah, that'd time. Yeah, so. We're gonna get you we'll like get talking. Kikero, we'll get Kikero to to do the hook. We'll, yeah, we'll get Kikero to do mm, the hook. I'll do a verse. You do You'll a verse. Do a, yeah, Charlie can. Charlie do a verse. sings. He raps. Yeah. He raps and sings too. Yeah. We'll get. Let's get all the producers. Yeah. I know. I think that'll be I know a couple of them who, who rap and who else? There's so many. I don't even. Would know you where. Would you guys want to hear a, a diary conversation? Yeah, producers yeah. conversation. <laughs> then, producers version. We'll get, then we'll get one of the artists to speak what you what you always say. Okay, on my behalf. Yeah, on your behalf. We'll get or maybe yeah. maybe no maybe not even one. We'll get uh, like a few of them. They'll yeah. say you know like maybe B Flow come in and say you know. I know, you know, me yeah. and TK had some issues. Yeah, I know you got something to say. <laughs> TK has always got ideas. You know, what I mean? <laughs> then I'll you know come what? Up and I'll, that... say, I'll say whatever I need to say. That sounds like an you know, idea. Like I understand, I hear you. Yeah, you know, us being in the game long enough, we've learned so much. Yeah, and now we're trying to pave a way for the younger generation coming yeah, through. Well, you you were there before me, and I learned quite a bit from you. And, and I ended up learning from you. Yeah, a little Because it is me. what it is. Not yeah. little. Don't, don't, don't belittle it. So yeah, so we, we <laughs> trust me. We, we, How we, it affects us. me is different. You don't know. Actually, <laughs> even when I was doing the diary conversation, one of the first people that I, I approached, I said, KB, uh, sorry, I, I said, Tiki. <laughs> you see now. <laughs> now you see, you see you and me. <laughs> no, you're not a twin. Yeah. <laughs> It's just Let's like an go. age difference. Let's go. It's just like an age. I would have loved to have Charlie Mlalami here too. Yeah, it would be you nice. Know, but um, unfortunately, he has a bit of a... Um, a bereavement. Yeah, yeah a yeah. bereavement. You heard about it? Yeah, no, you told me about it. Yeah, yeah. You so, just told me about it. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think we can always schedule that for other time. Yeah. Anyway, let's 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 dive into a straight TK. You know, mm. um, I, I've talked about this a couple of times and you know it. And I know a lot of people don't know how, how we met. You know, even prior to our our Instagram battle and, and, and whatnot, people don't really know that before everything for me, mm. I was a huge fan. You know, Fofo yeah. is my witness. Um, and, and this is how I remember you. Um, when we're starting off, uh, you by then, Roma side, you were in Roma. Yeah. And I actually remember the first time I met you. I know you won't remember because you used to meet a lot of people. Yeah. So we used to hear about you. Obviously, I'd heard your music, you know, mm-hmm. you were popping. And, you know, by then we used to go to sci fi a lot. But, yeah. you know, you, you, you were popping then. Uh-huh. So we were trying to find a way to get to you. And you're in Roma. And, you know, at the time we didn't really have money. We were school kids. We were, we were, yeah. I was in second grade. Roma school. was all the way down there. Yeah, yeah I, I was in my 12th grade. I think you had completed school then. Yeah. You, you were slightly older than No, me. no, don't, don't make me sound old, <laughs> man. No, but. <laughs> I, nah, I, I, nah, I, th- I think the age yeah. difference between me and you must be like two or three years. Wow. Maybe four, I don't know. Maybe and, five. And, and, <laughs> well, I don't know. But Maybe you can call me uncle. Because yeah. <laughs> I completed school in 2001. So if I know when you completed, then I'll yeah, probably... Yeah, probably. I, I completed in uh, 97. Yeah, yeah. So 90, yeah. So it must be like four or five years. Anyway, so... Um, it was difficult to really get money. Transportation then was so hard. And I know a lot of artists also have the you same came story. To the studio. I did come. We actually walked to the studio. Was it the time I told you about the snare thing? That no, that, that's like at a different time frame. That's wow. like, a, yeah. So the first time was like, I think in 2000. I think 2000 or 2001. Uh-huh. Uh, 99? No, not 99. Maybe 2000. I think it must have been 2000. Uh-huh. So we, and you know, it's one of those where you don't have phones. So yeah. we just we just walked up to the studio and you know we kept on asking for direction. And you know you were known then. Yeah. Uh, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many, so so you know what I'm saying? And, and magically we 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 found the place. So we, we got spoke. There. 
Yeah, we did. So and I remember that when when I when I, when we got there, then I don't know who who was at the reception. It, it, but by then the studio was not at the house where you know that because you had moved there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think it was in the main house. In the main there. house, yes, yes, yes. So then I said I want to see TK, and the, the, the person that you know brought us in was actually very good. Oh, okay, no problem. You can come in and just wait. And you are playing a John D song. I don't even remember John D. <laughs> Of course you do. I know a lot of people don't want, never remember John D. Yeah. Unless you're from that era. I am from that era. You know, and it was popping and I was listening. It was like, this is dope, mm-hmm. you know. Then we just had like a little conversation, but you were very busy. It's like, oh, no, I'm busy right now. Then, you know, making inquiries, yada, yada, yada. Then we spoke a little bit. So, yeah, when you're ready, just hit me up. Mm-hmm. You were very, actually, when I met you for the first time, you were very nice. And, you know, we had a proper conversation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's how we left. And that's the first time I met you. Mm-hmm. Then the next time I met you is when I, I started working for the radio station. I started working for QFM. That's like four, five years later. Mm-hmm. You know, then you were, you were running the show by the time. You know, like, mm-hmm. Exile had his first album yeah. out. And, you know, like... So you, that was the time now you came to the studio. That's the time I came to the studio. Now, let me that's tell when you. we became friends. Now, let me say that yeah. story. Because I remember... Yeah. When you came into the studio, you there were a couple of guys in the studio. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what I was working. What was I working on? I can't. It's a long time. I can't yeah, but I was playing a track. And I'm trying to... I was trying to mix and at the same time re- reproduce a track. Yeah. And then you said something. You made a statement about it. About a reverb. Yeah. Those I don't know if you knew that time that you're a producer in the making. I, I didn't know, but I I knew that I had some interest. I said I like So that. I was I, here I am, I'm playing this track, right? And I'm I'm working and you guys were seated behind me. Yeah. So I, I at that moment, you know, when you when you get in the zone, you yeah. really don't care who's, who's, behind, who's you. behind you and whatever. So I'm busy making whatever and then you said, I, I, I put a reverb to something. Then you're like, wow. I love the reverb on the that's snare. That's a good reverb on the snare. I love that reverb. Then I stopped it. Then yeah. I turned. So who is this guy? I was like, dude. <laughs> you remember what I said? Yeah. What did I say? It's like... Uh, what? I pointed at you and I said, you've got to be, gotta be a, a producer. producer. Yeah. yeah. You've got to be a producer. Yeah. You've got to be a producer. Yeah. And then and I received thing, the blessings. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't, I bet you didn't yeah. know then, but I, just, I stopped the music and I said, you're going to be a producer. I, I and then had an idea. Later on, yeah. I remember you were hosting, was it Jonto? Yeah. Who had a show at uh, yeah. Polo Grill then? But you know, prior to that, prior to that, so how we became friends is, so when I started frequenting your studio, you knew that I was working for QFM and you know what I'm saying? So, and you know, uh, John Toe was trying to push his music there. Yes. And I remember I was the first guy that to play, really put, play, yeah. The, and the song that he, the song that met John Toe big was a song that he did with uh, with Monique, yeah. DJ Honey. Yeah, DJ Honey. Now. So yeah. I remember I was in the Respect studio and you played it. And I was like, this is dope. And I, I remember telling him, like, you know what? This should be the first single. So yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then you gave it to me. It. Then I went and I started pushing it. Pushing it. Yeah. So that's how me, you, and John Toe now became very good, good friends. friends. And then you hosted that thing. Yeah. Then I and when you hosted, what did I tell you? What did you remember this? I told you. I said you are you are one of the best MCs I've ever seen. You at that time you were lanky man. Yeah. So small. Yeah. With the Back knock in. knees and oh come on, get out of here! You're busy making, I'm like this boy got energy, man. I was yeah. like, oh, man, you you you're you're a package, man. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So, so after that, I also hosted the exit. I don't know whether it was the first or second album. I think it must have been the second album. The the one at um, ISL. ISL. Yes, that was the second that. album. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got and. Uh, yeah, was, rest in was. peace to DJ LBC yeah, yeah, yeah. with Cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash. Yes. So it was Cash. You so when we were having the meeting, I yeah. told them I want KB. KB yeah. I was like, I need we, KB. Gotta be our that's MC. Deep, man. That's <laughs> we come that's a long deep. way. So that's that's how it all started for me. <laughs> and, and here's the thing, and I've told this story a couple of times, and that's how I managed to put money together for studio equipment. I actually, I remember you used to call me a lot. Yeah. So I met the. What can I buy? What can I buy? Yeah, yeah I remember you. Chilo told back. me. Yeah. You went to SA. Yeah, you I met up with Chilo. Yeah. yeah. And but the guy that took me around was uh, was Moya. So oh, Moya, yes, yes, Moya yes, is yes, one yes. that took me around. And I, I remember buying these Yamaha speakers. Oh yeah, yeah. I bought these were the first Yamaha speakers, yeah. and I loved them. So when I moved from this, I upgraded to you know the yeah, bigger. I can see Yamaha. Yeah, I've, that's that's the only speakers I've ever used. I've only used Yamaha. Mm, so you're good. You're so good. yeah. So <laughs> like I said, I made the chunk of the money from the tour that we did for Danny. Danny was doing an album launch for. The song that had that as long as the one which then, was branded by a name brand. Yeah, yeah, then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, 
there was a big song that Exa was on on yeah. Mazoi. Yeah. I remember there was a song called Mazoi. Yeah. Did you present a song from that album? Ah, uh, that album I don't I don't know. Is, I mean, that's I'm that's not the album where there's no lyrics. Right? That's not the album, yeah. I'm not no, sure. that's not the one. But I yeah, so we went album. on tour. That was before I started producing. So we went on tour uh, for that Danny album launch, like mm. countrywide tour. So we went all over the country, and you know, so the package was pretty good. So after I think after about three months, we were th- three or four months, we were done. Then I was given my chunk of money, and you know, I had like because I remember Daniel was there at, at Polo Grill, yeah, the he time was. you were hosting, yeah, he was. And I told him yeah. we spoke about it. I, yeah. saw, I was like, this boy is good. Yeah. So that's how he contacted good. me. Yeah, that's how he contacted you. So it's like he, he would do like if you have like a corporate corporate guy yeah. coming in. So he's the guy too. I did a lot of MCing jobs. You I know, like, remember, like from two thousand and. People don't know that. Do they know that? Well, Sam, like, because I, I didn't do it for too long. So when I started my studio, I kind of, you know, mm. took like a, I didn't do a lot because, you know, they were offering me very little money. So, yeah, but no, know, I so I, I got off the radar. So I got off the radar. So the other guys that came in, you know, yeah. started getting recommendation. Yeah. But, you know, but I was the man. Like, I remember I used to do all the miss like I did Miss Horn, mm. you know, Miss Miss Unza, Miss mm. Nipa, Miss Miss Greenwood. I, mm. I pretty much did everything yeah. with a guy called, I don't know if you remember, uh, this guy, the, the one that had the boutique in Cairo Road. Oh, Envog. Envog, yeah. yeah. What was Theo? Theo. Yeah. Yeah, what's yeah. up? Shout out to yeah. Theo. Yeah. Where, where is He's Theo? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's how it all started for me. So, basically, you know, most of it was just inspired from what we saw from you guys, you, Charlie, and you know mm. what I'm saying? And, you know, we got inspired, and that's how I got inspired to start making my own music. Mm. But, you know, uh, at the time when I was starting, I was only thinking, like, because when you guys were having your run then, like, you guys had, like, a run for, like, 10 years straight. Like, yeah. no competition. It was it was either TK or Charlie. Mm. Then, you know, James James Cooler was also kind of in yeah, the mix as well. There. Jerry Fingers was also in the mix yeah. as well. Yeah. Jerry Jerry has been around yeah, for a Jerry long time. Been, Jerry actually produced our first song ever. Yeah. Jerry and Inferno. Remember Inferno? Yeah, Inferno. Yeah. Who doesn't really? Yeah. I think that was like Inferno, shout out to Inferno, Inferno Jerry. Shout out to Inferno. No, so. man. Uh, yeah, I remember that, man. Hey, Jerry, we, we used to speak a lot. I mean, I remember Maureen Linanda used to tell me, man, Jerry speaks highly of you. And oh, I, for real? I love that guy. I mean, I respect Jerry. I mean, you know what I mean? And then... I'm talking of Jerry. Sorry, before... Just speaking of Jerry, when that song, Doubting, came out... Uh. The first time when that song Doubting came out, you know, uh, he actually loved it. So I remember when we used to go for, um, you know, when, when Smooth Ike used to do those Born and Bread meetings mm. at ZNBC. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, so, so we so. met. So Jerry Fingers met, met me after a long time. I think he remembered me. I came here. How do you play? Long time. I have you been? I said, ah, I love that song that you did, DJ. When I said, I do, DJ. Yeah. Um, uh, doubtings like oh the chords those ninth chords and you know I was like what is he talking about like yeah. it, it sounds so technical musical. yeah, yeah you know, I, I, at, at the time I didn't even understand what I was doing it's just I just had everything in my mind that that's how you do it and yeah. so when I started to learn that then I was like oh that's what I did there you know, yeah. that's what I like you know practical like for me because I heard a lot of R&B music yeah. so I knew how I wanted sound to sound so it was easier for me to learn production because I already yeah. I already had an imaginative mind and that's the know, most so, important thing yeah that's the most important I mean, I, you and me are kind of similar we, we, we both have never really been the yeah. great keyboard players or no, no, local no, guitar no, no, no. player you know what I'm saying like you know <laughs> I, I see that you know like you know yeah. I've seen people that play with the keys pretty well but I think we're done pretty well for ourselves too. no we, we we try and you know uh, there's always a lot to learn you know you always you always learn every yeah. day that's why you know it's sometimes it's very important to be very receptive to new ideas to 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 people coming up you know with ideas and you know you can't be you can't be they know it all. Yeah, that's true. You get what I'm saying? I was watching, I was watching a documentary of one of the legends that made me start. You know, made me start producing music. No, tell me. Quincy Jones. Nice. So Quincy Jones again. Quincy Jones. I was a fan of the Thriller album. I only knew about Off the Wall after Thriller. Nice. Yeah, and that's when I started reading about him. You know, it was one of those things where. Everybody was looking at Michael. I looked up to. I was always a person. I was always a person that looked behind the. But that was the eighties, yeah. Yeah, I was the eighties when I was young. So I, I used to look at the. I used to look at the credits. The credits. Up to now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic for credits. I want to uh, know who's who behind done, what. Who done that? Because you see, at the end of the day, the product might, 
uh, how can I call it? Maybe it might blind you because mm-hmm. you look at it and it's perfect <clears throat> without understanding the nitty gritties, who's behind what. So, you know, if in order for you to know how to do great, you have to understand that it's a collective effort, so you need to know who's who and who's what, and you follow them, you know what I mean? Yeah. See what they're all about. Then you understand that even in your circle, mm-hmm. you might need certain people. You might meet a person mm-hmm. and shun them down without realizing that that is the person that's going to help you grow. True. You know what I mean? So you need to understand people with the working formula. So my inspiration was Quincy. Man, I didn't know how much Quincy did until I watched that thing on Netflix. Man, the guy is, is amazing. No, he you know is. I mean? But we didn't have Netflix then, so how did no, you follow his music? No, I used to... Tapes? Yeah, I would go... The, 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 the records. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would just look at Quincy Jones. Mm. Quincy Jones. Everything Quincy Jones. So I became a fan of Quincy. Mm. Quincy, to me, was more of an idol than Michael. Okay. Because I understood that Michael was a So you already knew you were going to become a producer. Yes. I used to say producer. I never even used to say producer. My sister would say... Producer, not productor. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, so I knew. So that that is what that drove me. And I remember I made my first beat. I think I was probably what? I was probably seven. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I made my first beat when I was about seven. We started a group. That was in the eighties. Yeah, in the eighties, bro. Oh my gosh. Eighties, nineties. Uh, I can't remember when. Oh my god. Don't 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 expose my age, man. No, man. So that's true. No, that's. <laughs> <laughs> now I see why people are saying that's that's unfair pairing. How can you put TK and K? No, no, no. It was it was saying? just it was just. I mean, at the end of the day, listen, man. Yeah. It is what it is, man. You've done your work. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Um, anyway, let's not talk about that. Yeah. I'm telling you a story. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, like when I made my first beat, we even started a group called True For Real. I was the producer. I became a rapper. So you thanks were like my the brother. Dr. Dre of your... Yeah, yeah. My, thanks to my brother, Q-Star. Yeah. Who, who pioneered the group and whatnot, whatnot. So yeah, we started we started this group called True For Real. I was the producer. I was the youngest. I remember even um, recording my first verse. It was at home on our microphone. But I was nervous. You know what I mean? So I, I get it when I see artists coming to the studio and they're nervous. Because yeah, I was nervous on a microphone that belongs in the house at home. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, we, we, we did that true for real thing, took us out of the country. Oh, you even took it out of the country? Yeah, we went to SA, did some, some shows there. Nice. Zim, did some shows there. We Are won you for a competition. Real? Yeah, won a competition. Which year was that? This must be in the 90s. 93, I think. Are you kidding me? Man, when, when, when Radio Phoenix was starting, it was us. You know, I remember Chilo Lemba that time, Bongo the Sharpshooter. Pioneers, man. Yeah, man. It was us. They used to just play Chilo Listen, I've never, you, we've never discussed this before. You've yeah, never told me this yeah, side yeah, of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I've known you all these years. Nah, ago. guys know. Guys know. Wow. I mean, like, I used to go to Bob Marley memor- uh, Memorial Concerts. Yeah. When I was like... I was like seven, eight. I used to Are play you bass. Kidding me? I used to play bass. Oh, you used to play bass? Yes, I used to play bass in my brother's group. My late brother Kevin, my so rest in peace. And yeah, Roderick, Kevin. I remember. Kevin around. used to play keyboard, right? Yeah, I used to yeah. play keyboard. Yeah, I played for um, B- Bishop. Bishop, yeah, he was yeah. really, really good. May so rest in peace. And I remember even Waco really Jam with with the late Russ Willie. May so rest in peace. Yeah, too. yeah. So they would take me. I didn't know that I was a gimmick. I used to because what would happen is every time when the when they're writing a song in the studio, mm-hmm. like Kevin would be writing all the songs, so you have, you have his rhythm guitar there. That time he used to play guitar. It was basically reggae. So you, my friends are playing outside. They're playing soccer. I want to go play with my friends. It's like, okay, just for 30 minutes, you know, just, just play some bass. I want to get the feeling. So I'll be there playing bass like, oh, this guy is troubling me without realizing that, that he, he, was, he was building. So whenever they would have a show, I would go to the shows. <laughs> I used to love music. Um, Brian Changala, shout out to him. He'll tell you about that. Mm-hmm. Brian Chilala knew about it. May so rest in peace too, man. We lost mm-hmm. so many people in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, I would go there. I was so young. I didn't know what would happen, but they would call me here. You know, like the bass guy would be like, ah, listen, I want to change the whatever. The mm-hmm. mix. So you put me in a speak- on the speaker. I was so short then. Mm-hmm. Put me on the speaker. Give me you were small, you were young. Mm, I was young. Mm-hmm. Put me on the speaker. Give me the bass. Start playing. Was I did not know I was a gimmick. I only realized it later. I was a gimmick. These guys would say, oh, we roll with a small boy who plays. So every time when I start playing, 
I would notice people would stop dancing, and I'm like, am I not doing the right thing here? Yeah. What am, what's going on here? But Why? I used to get intrigued. In, yeah, like, who's this young boy? All I would see is after my play, I would get a lot of Fanta, a lot of food, you know what I mean? And for you, that was a good thing. <laughs> so I didn't care. I was like, I'm just helping out. I didn't... So this fame thing for me wasn't really... You know, I, was, I didn't really understand it, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, yeah. I never did it for fame. Yeah. So I grew up with that, you know what I mean? So... It was one of those things where it's just a passion. Yeah. You grow up with it. And then, thanks to my late parents, they supported me. You know what yeah, I mean? They, they supported me. And to get me off the streets, I mean, my neighborhood was crazy at the, the Roma. time I was growing up. I mean, Roma was crazy, man. So you predominantly grew up in Roma? Man, there was a Same time, place? Like, yeah. Oh, no, I was at another place, but within Roma. That place was crazy. I mean, if you remember in the early 90s, late uh, mid 90s, there was a lot of stories about that place. You know, the president's son then, and when you watch the, the news, Castro? yeah, I mean, so rest in peace. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of those. There, there were a lot of stories going on about that place. I mean, I'll be, I'll be chilling with friends, right? Yeah. Then I'll be like, ah oh, man, let me go. I feel like going to play music, so I'll leave them, go play music. Then I'm watching the 19 hours news, and in other news in Roma, so and so were picked up by DC, mm. without knowing that they were actually current stuff. Mm. So I'm there chilling with them, having a drink. So you didn't know that? I didn't know that. So that would have gotten into trouble. Yeah. So, so music was my scapegoat. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So my parents understood that. Wow. So that's the reason why they would give me time to say, Go do this your is your thing. passion. Yeah. They bought me a bit of equipment. It's going to keep him busy and nice. off the streets. They actually bought you the first equipment. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have the money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's how, that's how it was. So I'd love, I'd go back to my music and then... That's how I'd go to meet people like Castro. He would come over. He used to rap. Oh, he used, yeah, he used to rap. You know the one I remember? He would jump, he would jump the wall fence from I, the monsters. I remember. Wait, wait. Before I lose my... I remember. His, his bodyguards would actually drive to my gate. Yeah. Because he would jump the fence. And they can't jump the fence. So they would actually come around. Yeah. And would come over. The one I know that used to rap is a younger brother. Yes. He used to call himself Blackheart. Is he yeah, the, the guy who had the dyed hair. He also looked He also looked like Castro. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He was real. But the, I think he used He to, came over to the studio as well with Crisis. I knew him from, from Cypher Music. Yeah. He used to come then when. when uh, what's his name? Uh, the owner of Cypher, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Ch um, Chayla. Chayla. Yeah, Chayla. Chayla so he had all that connection. And that's why he, he used to call himself Blackheart. I don't know if yeah, 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 he's yeah, called yeah, Blackheart. Yeah. He's the one that I knew that I used to rap. That's, how, that's where Crisis knew him from. So I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know that Toronto Castro side. used to rap. No, Castro used to rap a lot. He used to love rapping. I had no idea. He used to do it for fun, man. I had no idea. I mean, he was a troublesome guy. I mean, so rest in peace. I mean, you know, I mean, he was, he was, I mean, he was young. Yeah, but everything's I, happening. I never met him personally. But... I've never had an, I never had an a, a, a negative encounter with him because okay. the first time he met me I was rapping so he loved that from that time we kicked it he would mm. come over hey man play me some jams raps 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 he hears himself rap he never even cared where the music goes as long as he hears himself, himself rap, rap that's it yeah I know I, yeah. <laughs> hey man thank you yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah rap it you know yeah. I'm two pack of Zambi oh <laughs> you know yeah, what I, mean? I know yeah, yeah. yeah. That's interesting, man. That's uh, I mean, I, I I know the other side, but this whole thing of you playing the bass and being young, I've never really, yeah. you know, conversation. But I also know that at the time when you guys were coming up, you kind of had like a friction with, with, with cypher music. So for those that were there at the time, yeah. you know about it. And, and, and this this was the time, and this was the time, before you get into this, this was the time that I met Exile. So I don't know where Exile was at the time, because Exile used to come to Cypher Music yeah. to record. He actually yeah. even had a song that he recorded. Uh, I actually remember some of the lines. He was talking about, you know, I come with an IFA track, Block the Road, Chan Chan Uko. He used to be a rapper. Then. He used to be a rapper. Very, he had like Con Rose, he was, he was yeah. like really dope. Yeah. That's, I, met, I, I remember meeting Exile the then. first time. I met, met him Ray as a rapper Grams, as well. Ray Grimes, yeah. We yeah, all knew Ray him as Grams, a rapper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's only when. Anyway, yeah, let me know. Yeah, it's, it's so lucky is what changed that. Yeah, yeah. I know. And he told me I heard so sing. lucky. I was like, like what? I can sing. And he did that song. For, that was the was, first song he did? Yeah, that's the first song, the singing song that I we used to he used to rap. You ah, know what I mean? Then he says but then he said, No, I can sing, man. I want to do a song for somebody. That's how he sang the song? Yeah, he's, he, that song wasn't supposed to be out, like commercial. He did it for someone. Then that somebody is the one who told him, Don't you doing this song for me? This is a hit. Take it to radio. And then he, I just gave him a CD, one CD, and then it went all over. I don't know how. He just went viral on his own. 
Well, good song is a good song. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? That meant, it gave us the pressure. Like, oh, let's work on this album. Then. Yeah. Then the second did, song that we produced. Uh, Convela Nimbe. Oh, my God. And, you know, Mervin it was so amazing that... Classics. It was so amazing that... The, uh, so Lucky, when the album came out, So Lucky was song of the year. Yeah, I remember. Then following year... Convela Nimbe. Actually, Convela Nimbe was, was, was song of the year two, two years in a row. Yeah, man. Yeah, two years in a row. I remember. Yeah. The I'm only gonna... album that did that. I'm not bragging. Yeah, no, it is. Oh, no. Hands down. You know, <laughs> for me, Exile, that album, that album till today. Man. You know, it till was, today. It was, it was, there was a lot of challenges when we were recording that album. And you know, at the end of the day, like I told you, passion beats everything. You know what I mean? When you're doing it, you're not doing it to me. We never even thought money. We never even thought, I mean, this is like, this is going to change things. This guy can actually sing and he's, He's, he's speaking sense, you know, he's, he's speaking from, you know, I've got this thing about being genuine. You know, some people, when they get into the studio, they want to make a song, oh no, because people want to hear this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's different. But when you're making a song, not because people want to hear it, but you want to tell a story. Yeah. It's more like you're trying to give back to the community. You're trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to put a footprint mm. of your life, you know what I mean, of you. You know, on the market. It's not about just making songs so that you can make a hit. No. True. You want to speak. You want to tell people a story about you so others will be inspired. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. It's it's like giving advice. Yeah. You know what true. I mean? That's true. Take it or leave it. Yeah. So that's that That was me and Dick Zone. That was a revelation. And, you know, this, and, and I'm going to say this here, you know, just from there, TK, I don't remember you making a song that I felt like didn't do well. Everything you did, like even when I go to the studio, when I hear anything I heard, like even when you, that song that you did for JK, when JK kind of came to you, uh, mm. put yourself in our shoes. We'll put and yourself I don't, in my shoes. I don't even know why you didn't put play yourself. that. <laughs> JK, 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 JK had, um, you know, I think when we're doing that song, you, you know, JK is, is, is a singer. Yeah, he loves to sing, but then at that time I think he had priorities when it comes to what which songs to push. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He had a certain style mm -hmm. that he preferred mm -hmm. to to push put, to, put to, put, to put out, and then the others you'll be like, ah, no, I'm not interested. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But that song did very well, actually. Yeah, it did. It, it did. did. I li I liked it. I liked. It. I remember. Yeah. I can't remember what inspired us to do that song though. Nice, a long time. Yeah. But yeah, you, you did so many things, I don't think you remember everything. So moving on from that, um, I, I, I remember after that, then, you know, I, I started making music, then I think you were a little shocked, like, can't be making music? And I know a lot of people, a lot of people used to get shocked, like, this QFM, he's a, he's a radio DJ, like a QFM DJ. No, but I knew that you were going to make music. But a lot eventually. of people didn't believe it. Like, a lot of people, actually, I... I had people that I think for the, like the next six, seven years, like, oh, he doesn't produce the music himself. I don't think he does. I think uh, Daxon produces the music for him. Or yeah, whatever. no, everybody. Like they didn't, they didn't really believe that. You yeah, know. you know, you know what it is. It's like um, I always have this saying, man. I say it to myself. I've never read it anywhere, but um, the clever ask the questions. The dull have the answers. So you came up with that? Yeah. You know, um, the clever say, how did he do that? How did it happen? How did it manage? How did it? But then the Dow ones be like, Awe, Uja, Tizi, Va, Niso, Uja, Nivaso. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. So, be and you. I mean, I've, I've had history with a lot of producers, man. You know, like, I can tell you, Charlie, I wish he was here. Yeah. You know, we've got a history. Yeah. What used to happen? Like, that, that time I was with Nexus. Was I was with Nexus. Um, I was with Nexus. We're doing that thing with KMT. Shout mm -hmm. out to KMT. You know, so um, Charlie wanted to start producing, and Charlie was a similar situation. Charlie came to me. So studio. you started to produce before Charlie. Yes, Charlie came to me as an artist, and he is a good singer. <laughs> he had this song, I can't remember the title, but let me tell you, he, for the first time, people would come to me and tell me. You know, I used to work with Tivo. Tivo would come to me and tell me, "Yo, I want the track to sound like this. I want the track to sound like." this, you know what I mean, we'll get some reference from the track here, let's get the snare from there, let's, you know what I mean, it was different, but with Charlie, he was giving me everything from the mind, he told me, I want my kick, my drum to sound like this, I played, I was just basically an engineer, who was working with the keyboards and everything, he didn't know how to use Cubase or any one of these doors, nothing, 
So he's telling me exactly what, how he wants it. I want my I want some strings that should go like this, and I'll play them. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You can you can add a bit of something if you want, but I want them. You know what I mean? And the track sounded good. So he played the strings himself? He was playing them from the brain. Oh, okay. And he was giving me the, what to play. To like, can you play like that? Mm. And I'll play it as he wants them. Mm. And for the first time, I had that experience. Okay, that was before I worked with uh, TV and them, yeah? Mm -hmm. But for the first time, I had that experience where I'm like, wow. Dude, you literally produced this mm -hmm. without playing anything. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was impressed. The, 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 the sound was good. I was happy, you know what I mean? And then he, he was rapping. Oh, he was he, rapping? Yeah, he was rapping then. He had this song. It was a conversation between him, God, and the devil. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> so you had this concert. Well, and, nice for, and I'm here. like, where is this guy from? You know what I mean? Who does a track like that? It's very intriguing at the same time, very... Uh, you know, it's you, you know, like it's it's a little bit daring. You know what I mean? Like, who does a track like that? And he was that time. I remember I was more inclined. He was a gospel artist, basically. You know, mm -hmm. so he had this very nice, a very intriguing song. So I told him, I told him the same thing. I said, you know what? You just deserve to be a producer. You you literally played everything here, and you're writing everything. You're doing everything. I'm just basically your engineer right now. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and your session player, obviously. So I was like, you know what, you need to learn how to do this. And I got busy. So he got a bit frustrated, you know. Oh, well, he wanted kind of, you to teach him? No, he didn't, he didn't want to learn at that time. Mm -hmm. He just wanted his tracks out. But I had mm -hmm. so much work going on. So which, he, year, which year was this? I can't remember. Maybe he can remember. L late 90s, yeah. maybe? <laughs> yeah, you continue this conversation in the next diary with him. Okay. So anyway, yeah, so now I'm at Nexus. Then he buys a computer and everything, and he tells me, no, dude, uh, what you said, I want you to help me learn how to use this equipment. So what I'll do is that I'll get artists. I had a lot of artists at Nexus. I had this projects going on, a lot of artists coming through. So what I started which, doing... Which project? I think I remember. Which project? The time we're doing the Nexus compilation. I remember. With Alubusu. I remember. We had that Mumpy, the first song that Mumpy ever did. Is that where there was Chikoro Kumau as well? Chato. Yeah, we had a lot of artists. I can't remember how many. Even I didn't produce, was yeah. You didn't produce everything? No, I didn't produce everything. Mm. We got uh, Easy Mike. Remember mm. Easy Mike? He's still around. I don't think I remember Easy yeah, Mike. Yeah, Easy Mike. Uh, who's brother? Easy Mike is a brother too. He's a brother too. Is it? Is it um, what's the guy's name? The guy who did uh, Kakabarika, I think. Isn't that the brother? What's his name? Not Chameleon, but the other dude. What's his name? Um, Bob Moli. Bob Moli. I think they're brothers. I think Seriously? It was, it was Bob Moli. Hey, forgive me if I'm wrong. But ah. yeah. So Easy Mike, shout out to him. He was there. We did some whatever. So what I'll do is I'll get some some artists from the studio and I say let's go and pay studio time at Sling Beats. Mm -hmm. So pay studio time at Sling Beats and then we'll share with the spoils with Charlie and I'm like, I'm gonna work with them, just sit and, and learn and watch. I never been to school so I can't explain mm. the house. Yeah. So just sit and where you you don't understand You ask the question. Wow. So that's how it was. I went there, did whatever, whatever. That's how Charlie got into producing. That's interesting, man. Yeah. I didn't know that's how he got into the business. Yeah, that's how he So it was through you? Well, you already had it in him. Still, All man. I just did is that I helped him. You the real god, man. Yeah, I just <laughs> helped him understand what he needed to do, you know, mm. for himself. Mm -hmm. The next thing, he starts churning out hits. I do things, and I'm like, wow, this guy is doing things, you know and what I mean? I, I even, I, I cannot, I can, trust me, I even, I got inspired to a point where some of the tracks that I'll produce, I'll be like, okay, what would Charlie do here? And you know, the thing is that every time he would, he would have a, a record, like an album out, before he drops it, before, he, you know what I mean, he would come to bring you. me, I come to me, or the chameleon. We, 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 that happened, that happened with me as well, so when we, when we became friends, that was the order of the business because I knew I knew Charlie at the time when he was doing the OZ. At the time when he was doing OZ. Yeah, he got OZ off me. Oh, OZ was that, with yeah, because I did that backstabber for that. Yeah, I remember he did backstabber. Yeah, so yeah. he called me and he's like, "I like to work with that boy. That boy did backstabber. I think I've got an idea. Yeah. I've got ideas for him." So I said, "Yeah." So I, you know what I mean? I told him I gave him uh, contacts and whatnot, and I think OZ that time was in Kawe. I don't.
know how it worked out mm -hmm. the, the end, but I remember having that conversation with him. Ah. So yeah, it got Aussie and man, those guys started churning out hits. But every time before he drops it, an album, he'll bring it to me. I remember when I was listening like to the Amo album, he brought it over and I told him, and you know, cause I think he trusted the fact that I'm a very honest person. You know what I mean? I'll tell him, ah, this, ah, that, you know what I mean? We've had, we've, had, we've had our differences. I won't speak about them. You had uh, the differences? I'll well, love I'll to hear one. I would love him to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, but he, he's also going to tell us what the difference. We would love to hear it. No, maybe. That's what he said. It's a maybe he remember, remembers it different. It's a diary conversation. No, we've had, we've had differences. No. Though, but we've never had a difference between them. No, me and you have never had a difference before. Maybe even, not even over no. a woman. No. <laughs> You want to tell me about it? <laughs> Have we? No, I don't know. Did you ever get pissed? No. Did we ever date the same girl? Did we? No comment. <laughs> no, I think we did. Yeah, yeah you know, I think we did. You know, we did. I, I, I think I <laughs> that was a long time ago. But I don't think that. Maybe, yeah, but that doesn't define. Maybe inside, is, maybe you are not happy about it. I don't no, know. No, no, no. Because you never no, said anything. No, 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 no. Listen, when you here. never said anything. No, listen. I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, that, no, no. What defines us is how we were. That's a diary session, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So you know, yeah. that's how it was with Charlie, for instance. You know what yeah. I mean? So I did that with a lot of art. With a lot of even crisis. I remember crisis. He used to work a lot with. Uh, there's that keyboard called Triton. At the time, it was like the the ish, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, he, they, at Mondo, they had Triton. Mm -hmm. And it, it had samplers and everything. That's how I learned, even from him, I learned how to use samples. Mm -hmm. Like, I can give you an example when I was doing that way on a nail. Yeah. I used a lot of samples in the remix. Because ah. of Crisis. I, I, used, I used to watch how I used to do things. Yeah, because Crisis was, was, the, was the master time, of samples. Yeah. At the same time, I learned how to work with uh, the door, which was Cubist at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. He learned how to work with the door because he was mainly. Uh, the Triton guy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Even mm -hmm. for the Rhythm Nation, he did a lot, a lot of work mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. with, with that keyboard, and it was amazing. But <coughs> you know, with MKV that time, yeah, yeah, Manasseh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever he calls himself, now. yeah, okay. yeah, same thing. You know what I mean? I worked with a lot of Knox. You remember Knox? Anyway. But TK, I, I want to know what differences you had with Charlie. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna sit down. No, with it's, it's very petty. What was it about? No, it was very petty. I'm no, we'll talk about it later. It was very petty. It, it must was have been crazy for you not to want No, to but it. I brushed it off and then we ended up forgetting about it. You know what I mean? I mean that's what men do. Yeah, we ended up forgetting about it. Okay, you know what I can I can tell you, you know, it was one of those things where I used to take clients to him and I'm teaching him. He's supposed to be paying me, mm. but I'm paying him. Then there was a time my, I was stuck. Mm -hmm. I needed some work to be done, and I went to him, and I'm like, "Dude, I want to use. Can you allow me to use a studio?" And he wanted me to pay for it. Ah, I'm like, Charlie has always been a businessman. Yeah, I know. I understand. <laughs> I understood. I can't take it away from you. You don't do favors for people in, ex, in expecting to get something Charlie's back. Charlie always been a businessman. You know what I mean? <laughs> expecting to get something back, and I was like, "This dude," you know what I mean? But I figured, I realized that okay, that's him. And that has you know what I mean? Me. And yeah. I grew I past that. We still went there. I mean, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? We... Before I lose my thought, TK, and that reminds me, you know, T uh, Charlie is the first guy that taught me about how to copyright your music when you're taking it to Zamcorps and, you know, how you need to. Exactly. He's the first guy that sat me down. So you see, he taught, he taught me something too. You he know what I mean? That, yeah. Yeah, because I listen, learned that from him. Yeah. He's he's one of the only few guys. Even when the artist used to who complain. Understood, yes. Yeah. He's the only he guy who the understood, PDD. yes. He knew that I'm, I'm writing these songs. And that's yeah. the reason why. I mean, he did an amazing job. No, he did. You're and right. It's not, like you're, it's not like he was. I mean, he had a lot of other producers. Yeah, that you yeah, 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 of course, we know that. I mean, those. Um, there was this guy that is in, in Europe, the Costa. Uh, Amoba guy. produced like three quarters of the Mampi uh, album, for instance. Yeah, Amoba produced. Amoba produced. What about the other guy? But he was writing. He yeah, was no, what, about, what about the other guy, the one in Europe? What's his name? Uh, uh, Chipo. Yeah, Chipo. Chipo also produced a lot of Yeah, stuff. Chipo is the one who actually did. Um, uh, Shelera? Shelera, the first one, yeah. yeah. 
he did that together with Francis. Yeah, then you did yeah, the remix. Then, then uh, Charlie was Charlie doing right. the writing. And then he knew how to go and re- uh, register. Yeah. What's the other guys expected We had no to, idea. Yeah, so you see, that's what I'm saying that, uh, you know, our difference, it, it was, uh, you know, you don't do something a favor for somebody expecting a favor in return. Yeah. You know, you need to stick to, I mean, he, he taught me that. Yeah. And it's not like I hold it against him and I say, you know, that time I just, I just didn't know I was naive. Yeah. And he he just did what he had to do. Yeah. You know what I you mean? You actually and even gave me the first contract. Like after that, then you know I was like, I wanna. Then you showed me the contract. Oh, this is this how, how it is. Yeah. You know. I mean, uh, just about. Uh, but unfortunately, ticket between me and you. Unfortunately, this contract business have never really worked. I, no, I. I, I don't think it's issues. worked for you. It has never worked for me. No, listen. You know, it a lot has, of people. It has I'm, never worked for me. I want to say it right. Back. I want to say it too. I, this this is conversation we're having here. I want to have that conversation. You know, you know. The thing is that a lot of people been asking me. I meet a lot of people and they're saying, "TK, what's going on? You're not producing music. What's cutting? Yeah. What's happening? You know, it's not even because I don't want to produce music, but yeah. I want to do it the right way. But yeah. not a lot of artists are willing to work with the right conditions. Way. Yeah, they are been to man. I took I took a trip to SA. I went to meet people, see how it's done. It's a normal thing. You produce a track. Man, some producers don't even get paid yeah. to produce. Yeah. People pay for studio time, but a producer will work. As long as you're working with an 80s artist, you expect your money through royalties. So can you, can you explain that? So uh, It's okay. about publishing. Yes. So, so I, there's a production fee. There's what you pay to make the music. Yeah. Then that you, is an advance. It's called an advance. advance. Then you... Or you are entitled to royalties when the song comes out. Is that producer? He's done some amazing stuff. Uh, it's it's amazing that a lot of people here in Zambia don't know him. Let me just get his name. I want to get his name straight. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's he's a Zambian boy, young to from Kalundu. Uh, M M major. M yeah, M major. major. Ma- 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 minor major. Minor is what is the guy major. that produced the Shekinah song? Yeah, e- Emond. Ma- his name is Emond. Emond. But Emond. His Emond. Instagram Emond. Is ma- minor major. Ma- ma- yeah, minor, minor major. major. Yeah. Very good producer. He's done a lot of work. Yeah, I've, I've met him. A lot of people don't know him. Yeah. I, uh, the no, but they're starting to know him now. Well, we met him together, remember? Yeah, yeah we did. We were doing that thing for Oxford. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So, you know, he spoke about it too. We had a conversation because he's, he's in that game. He's yeah, there. in South Africa. So, you see, a lot of artists have gone and he's to still artists. getting he's still getting his income. I cannot lie to you. A-list artists, Zambian A-list artists. I won't mention any names here. But we know them. Yeah. Mm. Dude, I, I came back from and I'm telling him, oh, so we need to finish those tracks and then we just need to sign some contracts. Dude never came back to the studio. Next thing I know, the same track that I gave him just to go listen to, and mixed, still working on it, he he released it, cause he just didn't want to come sign the contract. They expect you to survive off. I don't know how much you charge for studio. There's survive. studio time. Yeah. Studio time is one thing, but production is something that you cannot buy off. Mm-hmm. You can get a, a, an advance. Yeah. Just a few months ago, I was given. Stash a contract. Mm-hmm. I had a chat with him. He called me up. He's like, dude, I know big man. You work with a lot of people. I've, I've had that uh, conversation with him too. Uh, you know, the, 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 I've given him a contract. said, work with this. But I know a lot of artists who wouldn't want to do it. That's why a lot of producers now, what is that, like what you're doing yeah. with the diary. Yeah. Yeah, you see, yeah. that's you being clever. Do so you know you how I ended up that? Sorry. I ended up on that because I I got frustrated, yeah. you know. I got frustrated to a point where I didn't see the benefit. Like every time you put out a contract, you try to make the mm. artist understand. I know the fact that we're not really making that kind of money here, so because the artist is gonna make money through the shows, it's so you are expecting the royalties. Like they, even the royalties are very, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the royalties are not that good. So I had to find a way that I would start to benefit off my catalog mm. and the music that I make, and I just started I mean, to make my own music. If you if you look at uh, people like Swiss Beats, Timberland, shout out to them, man. Those guys are doing major things. That's but you see why? Why? Yes, it's because of good catalogs, yeah. and those catalogs are paying them. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? When you make a beat, what's a song without a beat? Nothing. You know it's, what I mean? It's, it's like a human being with no clothes. Yeah. And you go to, honestly speaking, I'm going to say this out loud, man. Zam Cops need to work up. We need yeah. to work hard. They need to wake up. Honestly. Yeah. Zam Cops is not doing a lot when it comes to publishing. They, but there's, honestly there's, speaking, there's a new money. I'm going to say this. There's a new no, money. I think now. they need our help. They, but there's a new money. So let me now. not shut. Maybe, maybe we need to go and meet them. But the last yeah. time I was there. Yeah, no, the last time there were copyright problems and. Dude, we did this track. You remember that track we did with um, uh, where I had B Flow? 
um, Ozzy and the guys from Nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember the song. Yeah, I know, I know, I know the song. Yeah, we're working with Carl. Yeah, Carl from, yeah, from Nowhere. Yeah. So, you know, we started that idea. Actually, that verse that uh, B-Flo did was supposed to be JK's. Mm. So, B-Flo wrote a verse assuming that, okay, JK will come and do it. But then we ended up keeping it because JK was busy at that time. I, I don't remember. But anyway, that track has generated a lot of royalties. And those royalties cannot reach us because... Zamkops is not in the system. The world, the world cannot identify Zamkops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody, if you're assigned, if you if you're registered with Zamkops, you've got an IP address, a number that is supposed to be shared everywhere. When when that the music number, plays anywhere, yes, you got you get your income. Dude, some guy had to fly from nowhere. Mm-hmm. Came to Zambia. He even went on smooth, smooth talk. I think smooth IK can remember. Remember, Cow. Cow mm-hmm. went there and he said he outrightly said Zamkop ain't doing nothing for for the industry. But you see, that's where that's a secret. Publishing is very important. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's, there's a new management team. I I I, I think Ebo and his team are kind of trying to. We need to we need to go and, and you know conversation. conversation. Yeah. And I think what we need to do is that we need to get some. Corporates involved. Let's get some people come up, come, come here. Let's do a workshop. Yeah, and then we we'll change the system completely. Yeah. I've been to Zamkops and some lady, that lady, I've forgotten her name, and I won't even say it even if I remembered it. Would only say, no, our system does not pro- support producers, and I'm like, You're yeah, I, I remember that. You're stupid. Yeah, sorry. And the, and that's the for me that was so disappointing because I'm yeah. thinking, and you know the artist, and this is what used to hurt me the most. You know the artist would, luckily, you know Alpha would always come and say, oh, I've been called to pick yeah. up my royalties, and you know Alpha was a very, he's always been a loyal guy, and you tell me, I said, how much you get? And you know, oh, I got this, and you know, can you hold this, you know, for? I remember. But, uh, but you know, I, the other artists will not even tell you. They would secretly go get their royalties. And, and it's not and, supposed to and be And the how case. is that supposed to disadvantage a producer? This is the only country I've seen. Yeah. But I'm told now everything is going to change. Like, that is going to be included. And, you know, producers yeah, it's, now. It's, have, no, you see, as a produ- it's already been there. You're a composer. Yeah, you're a composer. You're a composer. You're not just an arranger. You're a composer. What's a song without a beat? Yeah, that's true. Even drums is composition, dude. You know what I mean? I remember when I took... Uh, I remember I was registering, I think it was uh, Ham's Way, mm-hmm. one, the first one. Mm-hmm. I wrote on those sheets and I took it to them and they're like, no, but how come here that two names, how come? And I'm like, were you there? Do you, have you ever even made a song? And they're like, ah, you're being funny, TK. I'm like, no, for real. What can you tell me about? You don't know. You know what I mean? You're just stuck here in an office, you know? I had to go register with Samro. I've registered with Samro because of that that that, that stuff. Samro's from where? It's SA. So you had to just go register elsewhere. Wow. You see, but you see, the, the, there's there are disadvantages to that. What if my music doesn't get to that market? Yeah. You understand and, what and, I'm saying? And the royalty that comes at the end of the year is. You know, they, they, there's a lot of things that need it's to like, change. It's, it's like a job. There are a lot of things that. We well, need the to issues change. is that we get is that some. Stations don't pay on time. Some have gone years. No, that's 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 that's, you that's know, a lot so. of bull. That's that's fake, bro. They're anyway, like, you, you know what I'm thinking. I think this would be like very unfair. You know, um, we're talking from the previous um, administration. Now there's yeah. no administration. No, I think we need so to. So it would be nice to have this conversation. Yeah, let's call that another conversation. Nice, it would be nice for me to sit down with Abel. It's, I've got nothing against and, uh, an individual. Yeah. No, I know. It's, it's the whole setup. It's the whole setup. No, I know what you mean. I mean, we need to. Uh, we need to identify. Putting a spade, a spade is right. You need to identify weakness. Yeah. Once you know the weakness, then you focus on the strengths. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean. Yeah. So we need to accept that yeah. yes, we're, these, there are things that we're not doing well. Yeah. I remember I had a conversation with Ponchano Kaiche in uh, Avondale mm-hmm. and he told me that the first time he went to ZMBC to perform he was actually paid a royalty you get my point so what happened now I mean uh, you can't say that people don't love Zambian music they still I, do I think they just preyed on people's ignorance exactly so then there's a problem <clears throat> you get my fix, point we, we need to fix, fix it that. we need to fix it and you see the <clears throat> thing is that at the end of the day it's not just affecting us or me and as, 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 as an individual. It's affecting the whole industry and it's affecting the economy. Because if my music is going to play, I had a song which was number four on BBC One Extra, top 10 African. 
tunes. The only Zambian song. That's what I did with Israel featuring uh, featuring Israel. Ndalama, Apu, Nachabe. I remember LBC called me, the late, may so rest in peace once again. He called me and he's like, dude, your song is at number four. DJ Edo has been playing you. And even sent me screen grabs. DJ Edo tweeting at that number four. TK. These guys have got all the information. I've never spoken to this dude in my life. You understand what I'm saying? He's a DJ, West African DJ, based in, in, in the UK, in the UK. playing, <clears throat> hosting the top 10 African tunes. And I'm looking at the top 10. There's David, there's Davido, there's what? And I'm there sitting at number four. When was this? I think Davido was not out there. No, he had, he had a song. I think he just... Oh, Demi Duro, Demi Duro. Demi Duro yeah. Yeah. This must be 2011. Yeah, somewhere there. Okay. So, those are royalties there. Yeah. 100%. You know what I mean? Those are royalties. So if that revenue is not coming back here, what am I doing for for my for my economy? Yeah, you get what I'm saying. I think that's one thing that we need to fix. Yeah. What am I doing for my economy? So imagine if every individual that's producing it's a, it's that's that's like an intellectual property from Zambia, made in Zambia. I need to if I'm going to fix my surrounding. It starts from the nitty gritties such as those. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? If that revenue comes back here, I put it back into my system. You know what I mean? Mm. I pay my taxes. And everybody else is doing the same. What are we talking about? We're talking about a different spectrum of, of youth. Yeah. You know what I mean? We won't be going out there talking government this, government that. The government needs us. You know what I mean? Wow, that's a very, that's, you know, even I mean, I, I mean, I knew about this, you know, I'm even enlightened more. Mm. And I think it's something that we need to um, look into, you know, like on a deeper level. But mm. this can only happen if if you and I and just, you know, people from my generation kind of educate. And, you know, I like you, I try to reach out to the younger mm. generation producers and try to explain to them. You yeah. know, this could be your time. And, you know, it's it's always nice to have the time when you have the hype. But you know, you also have to start making money. You know, yeah. you know, you're not gonna survive you, you, on 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 a passion. hype hype dice, yeah. hype dice, and into great revenue. I mean, we're here, you know, we we even the Bible says we're here to toil the ground. Mm. You know what I mean? So no matter what you do, no matter what passion, you know, it's 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 amazing if you you're doing something that you love doing and it's paying you. Mm. You know, as opposed to you getting a job. A nine to five, and you're doing stuff that you don't love. Yeah. If you're not into numbers, yeah. then you go and become a, a, a an accountant. Yeah. Trust me, you're not giving it your eighty percent, not even eighty yeah. percent. You know what I mean? That's true. Of your commitment, you're not. Yeah. You know, you need to do something that you love. There's another person that loves numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let them deal with that. Let them do. Let them deal with the, with the numbers. You know what I mean? And you work together. That's true. You know, everybody. We need accountants. Yeah. We need lawyers. Mm. You know what I mean. Just we as much have. as they need us to be their clients. Unfortunately, we don't. Yeah, but and that's and that's why I say that's that's how small our industry is. Yeah, but you see, what makes it small is starts from those nitty gritty. The mindset and, and, and so you know we need to uh, this conversation. We need to even take it to Ministry of Information. Yeah. If at all we need that that collective effort of bringing in people that can help us structure the, the industry starting from... So we need to start from scratch. From like the scratch. everything needs to be structured. So we need to use Publishing. the template, the yes. template that the world over is using. using. Exactly. So we can say, for example, set take like a South African template or yeah. like a US template. Let's not even go to US. Let's just take, for example, a South African, South African template. Man. Run with it. This is how they do I it. Went, I went to Samro, dudes. Those people are serious. It's a serious organization, dude. The information you give them as a publisher, you, to be a publisher, first of all, you have to be registered, obviously. You know what I mean? With uh, Like the way it is here with PACRA or whatever. You know, you get a certificate. Dude, they follow those things to the core. You understand what I'm saying? That's true. And then you look at people like Casper Novest, you look at him doing one, and then you say, I want to go to South Africa. No, we can do it here. Yeah. But what is it that we need to do here that they are doing over there that we're not doing here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And then it starts from those. Th it starts with those little things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Once we start sorting out those things, believe me, this industry is gonna change. True. You know, right now we make our money. We find ways of making our money. Oh, yeah, we do. It's not easy. We do that. It's it's not easy. Do this, that, it's, that, it's this, not easy. But listen, that's one but thing you that see, you and I have had this conversation. You know, working to make sure that mm -hmm. we set the future for you know our children and just yeah. you know people. 
coming after us. I think we've done a lot of work. And, and it might not be a popular. We, it might not be a popular idea yeah. right now. Because believe me, I have got this thing. I don't know if I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I believe that there's obviously somebody who doesn't want people to know. Yeah. No, it's you know what that. I mean. Yeah, it's there's somebody that. building a house in Chalala off your money. Oh. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Listen, it's not a secret. But you see, one thing is that we, one we thing know, they don't realize we is know that, that. But you see, one thing they don't realize is that, in as much as they're doing that, there could be more money that can be generated, and everybody will be happy. But selfishness, that money is yeah. going to one person because yeah, and it's not even enough because you don't know. Because yeah, it's not you, even enough. And you see, that's why we say knowledge is power. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't understand that there's a potential to make a lot of money. Like for example, like you from your catalog, from where you started off from. Look at people like Michael Jack. Michael Jackson's children are set for life. The you catalog know, is rich. Do you know what 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 the pro, the problem that Michael had with Sony? Yeah. It's because of his catalog. Yeah. He owned the Beatles. He, Dude, he, he owned did. the Beatles. Yeah. How do you own He the was Beatles? thinking about that he's got way Michael, before. He's got his Michael catalog. And he has the Beatles, the Beatles catalog. That's crazy, man. Yeah. You know, if 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 Sony had to pay him, pay him his money, they were probably going to be giving away half of their company. Yeah. Absolutely. That's power, man. That's power. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. You know, I, I'll take it back artists that we signed you know this was a big thing and you know i still get people calling me okay oh, we should sign and personally you know i've had so many bad experiences signing artists because what what i realize and i'm gonna say this openly what i i, I tend to realize is you start you know when an artist comes humble and everything and you know they're trying to get something and contracts and you know mm -hmm. um what i do know is like even if you bind somebody to a contract if his mind is gone, mm. no matter what you do, you're forced and you know, at the end of the day, you won't even enjoy doing your work because yeah. one person is on the other side, you're on the other side, mm. so it becomes difficult. So in the end, it's just all the work, like for example, two years work that you put together, is now void. Drain, you know, yeah. It becomes void because all the hard I've work had experiences. I've had so that experience. So all of us, yeah, we have. Really? And that's where, that's the, this is where I say, for me, in 2014 15 mm. i actually almost quit i i almost went into depression because it got to a point where i just got so frustrated mm. and I, I my studio then was like down there i got frustrated yeah, i, I, I kind of temporarily locked it down you know so i had to gain new inspiration then mm. i bought new new equipment then that's how i branded this place and started all over again so when mm. i was starting for me because i had this conversation with the late lbc i said you know what I need to figure this out, you know, because for me it's frustrating because I don't see how I'm going to make money through LBC artists. had a very good idea. Yeah, yeah because I mean, he was in the UK, he saw some Yeah, things, you know, LBC told me one He's thing. the one who told me how to start making my yes. own music and uh, selling it. Exactly. He I told got me the that same idea thing. from the late LBC. He told me the same exact thing. And you see, that's why I commend you on this diary thing. And yeah. we've, we've had this conversation. You see, ownership. It's yeah. very important. Oh, you see, yeah, when yes. you do when you do a song for an artist, yeah, you have no ownership. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm having an issue. There's an advert, not an advert, but an awareness, an awareness song. Yeah. I did with these ladies. Okay? Uh, I didn't even care who was going to be on the song. I had an idea. I wanted uh, Cantu on it. I wanted uh, I called Wazy on it. Mm -hmm. Wazy couldn't make it, whatever. Cantu was, was ill. I, I, I bet she's feeling much better now. Yeah, she is. So, it's, yeah. So, th this guy tells me, oh, no, I want these ladies to come over, man. Let them come and be on this track. Because I told him I needed a track for females. It's female alone, you know. Mm -hmm. So, these ladies come over. We do this song, right? <clears throat> they only did their verses. They only did two, like, a verse each. Of which, the verses that we, we wrote for them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then, the other artists couldn't make it. So, we are, there's some, these two uh, girls. Is it the girls. one I know? This yeah. is it the same one we did together? No, 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 no. No, no this no. is different. This one's different. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. but don't worry, it's got a KB touch. <laughs> <laughs> I sampled yeah. you a bit. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah. So I got these two girls, beautiful girls from just behind uh, the where the house is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can sing. I always hear them sing. So I, I decided to put them there, and they made it, they made it brilliant. We wrote them the, the chorus and whatever. So I sent this track to this organization, and those girls have got influence. So apparently they went there and took control and according to them, they pushed the song and it went through. So now when I, I also did a, a song with the guys, which I, I sent there as well. I was just sending via email and whatnot, whatnot. 
So when I went there, I was told, oh yeah, you got two songs. Yeah, whatever. Then, so I said, oh, okay, so I'm gonna quote, I have to quote for two songs. So I uh, left a quotation. And these girls got a bit uncomfortable. Hmm. Like, no, we the ones who push the song, song, song. But you, what? I'm the one who put it together. I'm the one who You know, so I'm like, one thing, I'm like, what's going on here? And it's not even like I've got a problem paying them what they feel they deserve. Yeah. We're going to share. I mean, at the end of the day, whatever is going to come out of it, let's share. Do you know what I mean? So it comes back to that ownership thing. Yeah. You see, <clears throat> at the end of the day, ask yourself, what have I done in this song? You know what I mean? You see, um, Sometimes we look at the end product. You look at uh, Trevor Noah, and you say, wow, well, Trevor Noah is the best. But you don't know who's behind the scene who makes him look like he's the best. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's a collective effort. And you see, that's one thing that we need to understand here, is that to, do, to achieve certain things, you can't do it alone. Yeah. Look at credits to a song, just a song alone. You know, writers, cool writers. Producer. I've seen songs with names even as much as thirteen. Yeah, one song. Because even you only hear three people rapping on that song or singing or whatever. <laughs> but when you see but the you see the credit sheet, thirteen people. You understand what I'm saying? You and I don't get a lot of credit. You know that we are actually even writers, and you know sometimes I give melodies to artists. Yeah, like, for example, like, that's writing right there. I'll come and just do like a sing with my chair, just sing like I was a line, about, and you know somebody. I was comes telling you about. Uh, Quincy Jones, for instance. You know, Quincy Jones writes music. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where it starts from. You see, the aid of computers has made it easier for us to, to make this music mm. without writing. Mm -hmm. But in those days, you have to write. So mm. that melody in itself mm. is written. Yeah. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? It's on score. Yeah. You get my point? If Absolutely. you don't get that score right, then the song won't be right. Yeah. So you're writing. Mm. That's why you're a composer. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So but people school, don't see that. New school producers, this is something that you, you can learn from. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, pay attention and do it right. You know what I'm saying? Do it right and let's do it right. And you know, exactly. it only starts from us and you know, our industry is growing and you know, let it grow the right way. Um, mm. As we conclude, I, I want to know who who are you listening to right now? Like, who's really, really impressed you? And I'm also going to tell you. Here in Zambia? Yeah, of course. It's locally. We just hey, there's so local. many, man. Yeah. There's so many. That's a very broad... That's a very broad But question. there must be one that... One or two that just come to mind mm. immediately. Like, oh, I... You know. Ah, there's so many. Man, I listen to Chef. I listen to t Sean, I listen yeah. to... Man... Ah, man, there's so many. Yeah. There's so many. Even your boy, Big Busy, is doing some good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Man, you get it, man. It's, ah, man, it's very hard for me. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. There's a lot that is popping right now. Yeah, there's a lot I'm that's also popping. very impressed with, you know, I've been having this conversation with, I don't know if you know the producer called Easy, the producer? Easy, yeah, Easy, yeah. yeah. Easy is one of the boys that Dope. has been calling for contracts and whatnot. I think Dope. I shared a contract with him. Very that great. boy is great. You know he did thing? track 13 on uh, Sheffield's album, right? He did a lot of track. He did uh, Grammy and Chibi. He did a couple of songs. Yeah, he's, he's, he's hard, he's hard. You know, and this is how I know. Just having a conversation, you can tell that these new school producers are well researched. You know, our time and, we didn't have a lot of those. You see, that the difference between them and us is that we really didn't have many people to look up to. Yeah. So you, you, it's hard for you. It was hard for us to pick up a call. Yeah. And pick up a phone and yeah. say, "Let me talk to this person." No, but I would call you. I was like, "Yeah, you call. You know, I'll yeah. call you. I'll call, I, I, call, I, I, I'll call I, I, Blazer." You know, uh, I had like my brother. And there's that Francis Mwinga. Remember Zintuastic Studios? Yeah, of course. Mm, the name. Francis Mwinga used to help me out yeah. a lot. My brother Kevin used to help me out. There were very few people I would call. Uh, I remember, okay, me and Kula used to... James. Uh, James and yeah. uh, Elijah. Yeah. We used to sh compare notes. At that time, I remember they were in Roma too. Yeah. So we'd compare notes. That's the same way like we would. But, you know, we really did like have a lot of Ray people Do. to call. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, there was a time you and Ray Doe yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that is he, though? He's around. I, I need mean, to have him on you the You know, Ray Doe is my, is my bululu now. Oh, for real? Through marriage, yeah. yeah. My brother married his cousin. How sweet. Yeah. And that was after we, we, we were hanging out or whatever. Yeah. We didn't, yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was, I'm always ready, though. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of these new cats, they'll call me like, hey, you know, yeah. they're like, easy, you'll be like, hey, man, contract that shiny, and I'll tell him, hey, dude, you know what I mean? I'm going to send you something, but this is how you go about it. And yeah. If you need any help, holler. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, he <clears> does well. You see, when a person does well next to you, 
then the possibilities of, uh, possibilities of you doing well are very high. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, for real. So yeah, so shout out. You know, this was like a producer's conversation. Yeah, and, you man. know, and and we are here to say that you know the the future is bright. It's honestly, bright. You know, it's bright. It's bright. Um, people like people like Kikero, people like Stash. You know, these, yeah, these are guys with incredible yeah. minds and. You know, I, there's I, so many. Yeah, I think right we're gonna now, have like a really even that boy. What's well. his name? Uh, Mosin Malik. Yeah, he's also coming up pretty good. Mosin coming up pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, coming up pretty good. There, there's so yeah. many right now. I remember he used to send me stuff a long time ago. For real? Yeah, he, he's uh, been in the long. game for a minute, huh? Well, he was trying to get into the game. I remember he would send me some stuff for me to listen. He was yeah. pretty young then. Yeah, but Tishon kind of you know brought him in, and you know, and I'm happy yeah, that I, things I like, are I like the way they're doing things, things are popping. So yeah, so big up to all the upcoming producers. But you know, I hope you learn something and you know this is something that can yeah. you know help us all shout out know. to Tony Breezy yeah Tony keep Breezy it in, too keep it, keep it in yeah, yeah. Another, great, another great producer yeah, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a jungle Jazzy Boy also Jazzy you know. Boy yeah, yeah. the Shanky there yeah yeah oh, Chester yeah. Chester, oh, Chester too, is really now sad. a politician now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there <laughs> okay, that's it you know <laughs>